Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome once again uh, to the BC114 course, Ministering Divine Healing. I uh, hope you guys are all excited. I hope you all are doing well, uh, well rested, uh, got a good break during the holiday season, Christmas and New Year's. Uh, well, good to see you all again. Okay, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Okay. Um, who can I ask to just get this whole thing started? Anybody, just, just feel free to just start this off with a word of prayer and we'll get going. Anyone. Go ahead, Sid. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for this new semester, for this new year, Lord. You have made us available. You have made us able to see this year. And we are thankful, Lord, for this new semester you are giving us, Lord. Whatever we will be learning, Lord, let it should be used for your kingdom, especially, Lord. To all glory be given unto you, Lord. Lord, mold us and make us in this way, Lord, which is suitable for you, Lord. Lord. We don't want to take any credit, Lord, but all the glory should be given to you, Lord. Thank you for this day that you have made us available, Lord. All the things you have given us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sid. Um, all right. So, uh, once again, welcome to uh, Ministering Divine Healing Course. Um, well, as uh, you must have taken a look at the course objective, right, is this whole course in a nutshell is to empower us, all of us, to work, um, walk in, in the power of God, to, to reveal his power to, to people around us, to live life the way Jesus lived. Okay, so uh, the hope and the goal and the objective of this course is, um, towards the end of it, uh, you will be equipped uh, to live a life and minister the way Jesus did, okay? And um, and for duration of this course, we will be referring to one of the APC's publication, which is uh, Ministering De uh, Healing and Deliverance. I have uploaded the PDF of this book uh, in the course material section, uh, classroom section, I think, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyways, uh, did everyone, uh, were you all able to download a P the PDF of this book? Yeah, I hope. You have it already. I'll just okay. There are two yeses. I just want to make sure everybody has this PDF uh, because uh, we will be using this uh, book as a reference for the duration of this course. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Okay, if you haven't, um, I'll give a minute to quickly go to the the classwork section. I've also it's in the mainstream section as well. Uh, I've uploaded it in two places, so you don't get lost. Sid got a hard copy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're in Bangalore or if you can get your hands on the hard copy, it's well and good too. I'm a little bit old school. I like I like the hard copies, so you can write, mark, whatever. All right? Okay. Uh, Rosalind, are you talking about the PDF? Okay, uh, so in the stream section of the classwork, classroom, right, in the main page itself, uh, you know where the stream section is, right? So you have four tabs on top uh, if you're in the classroom. You have the stream, classwork, people, and marks, right? Uh, you can either click uh, the stream section and come to the very bottom. You'll see I would have uploaded uh, the PDF with my long note. Cool, cool, okay. See, that's why it's crucial to make sure everybody is downloaded the PDF. Welcome, Roslyn. Okay, so let's go. Um, see, this, this course, once again, uh, it's going to be a little bit like the Gospel of Mark 
full of action. Like, you know, as in, that's what I mean, okay? He's just kind of, he's going to keep going, you know? He's not interested in the genealogy of Jesus. And hey, what, okay, Jesus came. He's the son of God. Boom, 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 okay? Um, so it's kind of going to be like that. Um, so as you know, if you have the hard copy, you know how big the book is. Um, so we have to keep things going, right? Um, so let's get this started. Uh, the introduction of it, uh, very simple, uh, you know, if in page one, if you just look at it, I uh, just want... Uh, the heart, uh, you know, although the, the title of this book and the course, uh, it's, it's about, uh, you know, ministering divine healing, right? That's the topic. That's the main thing, right? The, the theme or whatever. Uh, ministering divine healing. And the title of this book says ministering healing and deliverance. But the heart behind, uh, you know, that whole subject is evangelism, the Jesus way. Okay, evangelism, the Jesus way, right? So what is the most effective way to win souls and make disciples? Uh, what instructions did Lord Jesus give his disciples when he sent them out to impact the world, right? Uh, what do you do when you come down, uh, just to the next paragraph, you see the gospels repeatedly describe the ministry of Jesus, stating that he went about teaching preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people, right? He went about teaching, preaching, and uh, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people, okay? And then he commissioned them to preach, saying the kingdom of God is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Okay, so the once again, the heart of the subject is evangelism, the Jesus way, right? That, that's, that's the key point, okay? We need to drive that home. Um, right? And another key point is when we're going to be talking about the supernatural quite, uh, quite a bit, uh, that's going to be that we're going to be using that word supernatural time and time again. Okay, so another key point that we need to remember is that supernatural healing is in the process, is, is, is in the person and not in the process, okay, that we use. So what do I mean by that, Roshan? You know, supernatural healing is in the person and not in the process. So there are different ways that we pray for the sick, right? We either, we can either lay our hands on them and pray for them, or we, we, we don't, you know, we might not decide to or choose to lay our hands on them and whatnot. We might choose to use oil, you know, and just apply over them and pray. There are so many different process or methods that we can use that we have used. And Jesus himself has used, right? Sometimes he he used the clay uh, to heal a blind eye. Sometimes he spat on the mud. He made something, you know. And then sometimes he just laid uh, his hands on their eyes. And sometimes he just said, see now. And they were healed. So, there's so many methods and processes, right, that uh, we can go about ministering, healing and deliverance in the supernatural. But what is the key point is the healing, the supernatural healing is in the person of Jesus Christ. If he is not the core, if he is not the foundation of anything that you want to do, and in our context, the ministry of healing and deliverance, nothing we will do will matter if he is not the center, right? You guys with me so far? Right, so, that, so that's the second key point. So what's the first key point? Uh, the heart of this subject is evangelism, the Jesus way. That's the core underlying subject of this whole topic of supernatural. And then the next key point is the supernatural healing is in the person of Jesus Christ. Are you guys with me? Okay. And then the third key point, very important key point, is that every believer can do this. Okay, with your mics muted or in the chat section, type in, I can do this. Hey, come on, guys. <laughs> Be slightly excited. Awesome, awesome. Yes, yeah. Uh, 
the heart uh, let's just uh, actually let's read john chapter 14 verse 12 quickly can someone read john chapter 14 verse 12 Anyone. John chapter 14, verse 12. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I'm going to be with the Father. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Right? Um, so, it's, uh, yeah, like as uh, you know, we see the last comment there, it's through Jesus Christ who strengthens us, you know, who empowers us, who equips us. Uh, right, so we uh, we are able to do this, and he—that's his heart—is that everyone who believes in him will be able to do what he did, and much more greater things than what he has done. Right, that's the heart of our Father for us. And so, again, the third key point is just to reiterate: is every believer can do this. Right, that that was the intention of Jesus. The Lord Jesus intended for every person who believed in him to do the works he did, and even greater works. Right, as we just read in, in John chapter 14, verse 12, right? Um, so having mentioned these th three points, we come to another important question, okay? Uh, so why healing, uh, you know, miracles and deliverance? Why healing miracles and deliverance? I just want to ask this question before we go ahead, right? Now, how many of us have uh, witnessed a, a miracle? or a healing, or a deliverance? How many of us? How many of you? OK. I see multiple hands going up. Shafina said, OK, Zalatoli. If you have not witnessed, you don't become an unbeliever. It's OK. <laughs> it's just a question, OK? Um, right. Um, and I would like you know, to hear from all of you is what was your uh, I'm, I want to go back more deeper into what your first uh, witness of a healing or, or, of, or of a deliverance, right? Uh, you must have seen a lot over the years, uh, you know, but I want to know what was your first reaction or what did you feel the first time you witnessed a miracle, a healing or a deliverance? What was it? What did you feel? What was going through your mind? Feel free to unmute and speak. Rosalind, go ahead. I mentioned the name Rosalind. She left the meeting. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah, guys. Uh, just what, what? What did you feel? What was going through your head? Yeah, sit. Okay, go ahead. We'll come to you, Jeffina. Pastor, when I was like about to witness that healing, it, there was a doubt in my mind. Like, can it happen? Because it's not typically my witness, but it belongs to my grandfather. He was having cancer, and that okay. was all the second last stage. Right. So everybody was praying in the church, and our family was also reading. They were what we used to do. We used to surround over grandfather, and we used to study Psalms 91, 91 times. And after that, about after his operation, when his report came, the doctor was shocked. There was no cancer, wow. and I was believing like how it can happen. Hmm. And we were praising God in different ways. Awesome. This was my first miracle I received. Awesome! Thanks for sharing that, Sid. Appreciate it. Amazing, yeah. Jafina, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, my very first witness was my mom, but I was actually very little at that time. I was kind of doing my third grade or fourth grade, so I was very little. But, you know, uh, she was having thyroid, but the doctor at a point said it was healed, but still she was not healed on the inside, and we were thinking about all of the different things, what she could be going through, and... Finally, it was a curse, and she used to speak in tongues, and she used to be like she's filled with Saturn or something. I don't know a lot of information about it. I was very little, and I was afraid of seeing my mom. And uh, every evening, 
my mom's sister, she used to come and pray. So we hold hands together as a family and pray. The only thing that I wanted was her to be healed. And when I hear that the doctor can no longer do it, somehow uh, we always believe that God can do great things. So I was little, but I still believed God can do things. So we kept praying and praying, and finally she got healed. And what I felt was I was happy at that time. Like I got my mom back. That's the only thing that was on my mind. Like she's no longer going to struggle with anything. So actually I was very happy. That's the only thing. I didn't have any confusions or doubt because I was little. All that I wanted was healing. All that I wanted was my mom back and nothing else. So I was happy. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing that, Jafina. Awesome. Uh, Anybody else? I want to hear from you guys. Yeah. Yes, Abu Bakr, go ahead. The first witness of divine healing I encounter is my daughter, my little daughter. She was uh, five years old then, and he has a swollen leg, and the leg is paining her seriously. He can't sleep. We took, it, we took her to the hospital. And they did some series of tests, and they discovered that they don't discover anything. I was disturbed, and just recommend some drugs, and we bought it. And despite that, there's no changes. And after our morning devotion, one day I just called her, "Do you have feet?" I asked her, "Do you have feet?" That Jesus can can heal you. Say yes, I have feet. Daddy, pray for me. And immediately I lay my hand upon the the leg and I pray. I say, God, you said your word is send your word to this leg and heal it. Uh, every any sickness in this leg, heal it through your word. And immediately I, I pray. But one thing I discovered that that my daughter go along with me in faith and said, the immediately I pray finished, she said, My dad. The, the pain has relieved, and I, I didn't have the pain in my leg again. And as from that moment, you don't have any, you don't have anything, nothing happened to her again. So that is my first um, divine healing that I encounter. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Praise God. Praise God for what God did. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank, I, I mean, uh, so I'm sure by now you all remember that your first encounter, your first witness, uh, you know, witnessing a healing. Is I think it's important that we ask that question. I mean, you know, just so it takes us back to where you know how we felt, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, uh, and for my first witness is not was never really in person. It was uh, I think TBN or God TV. I don't know how young that was. Is you know, watching all these uh, healing services and whatnot, you know, people coming off the wheelchair. And I was, you know, wearing half pants going to school. So I didn't, you know, it's, uh, it, you're in a position of wonder, awe and wonder, isn't it? And in that wonder, there's so many things that's involved, right? You are amazed. It's like, wow. And you have these questions, like Sid, you know, it's like, is that really possible? How can this be? Right? You, you are filming all these mix of emotions isn't it and you're trying to figure out make sense of what is happening right um and i want you to remember all of this as we just uh, you know uh, go ahead and just study a little bit more about why miracles healing and deliverance isn't it um right? it's especially in this day and age like again you know Abu Bakr or anybody uh you know who have uh who is who's praying for healing and whatnot in this day and age where we have you know, advanced scientific technology in the field of medicine and whatnot. Uh, we, we don't need to struggle like people who used to struggle, say, 10 years ago, even 20 years ago. And so there's advancement being made every day, right? There's some breakthroughs uh, in the field of medical uh, medicine every day. Um, and 
while we are very grateful for what they do you know we never stop people from especially at apc you know we don't say okay you know don't go to the hospital at all don't take an injection at all you know i take a tablet when i have a migraine headache so john knows that <laughs> uh right uh, while we are just gra- thankful and grateful for everything that you know that medicine does uh we acknowledge what the doctors do in the hospitals do um uh, so grateful for for their support when we you know we went through wave after wave of covid attack right we so full but there is in spite of all of those advances we still need uh you know signs and wonders healing and deliverance and and i believe that right i'm um, so keeping all of that in mind uh, there are a few eight points that i wanted to take us through right um in your pdf we'll start from page 6 okay um some of the biblical reasons why we must minister supernatural healing and deliverance why we need to pursue it uh the importance of it okay so some of the important uh, points mentioned here the first one is miracles healing and deliverance reveal the reality and nature of god okay miracles healing and deliverance reveal the reality and nature of god um so all those three words miracles healing and deliverance and see the next word there is reveal okay and, and when you just look at and break down that word or think about other words associated with that word reveal you get the word revelation right there is a revelation of something there's a revealing happening and the root word is again unveiling unveil right is revelation okay so it was you commonly used in in the bible biblical days as if you know anything about the jewish culture women of those days or from the middle east is they would cover their faces with a veil right and if you think about moses when he came down from you know encountering god what not he would cover his face with a veil right so unveiling uh, there was a revelation of the glory of god on his face right so there is a revelation or there is an an unveiling that happens uh when we minister in miracles healing and deliverance it shows the reality that's the first thing isn't it it shows that god is real he is not just this mythical idea that he's floating in the second heavens above the clouds uh you know in what not he might be there he might not be there you know some of the agnostics think that okay i believe in the higher power and what not no these miracles signs and wonders show first that he is real right he is more real than the ground you're standing on more real than the book you're holding more real than the pen you're writing more real than the chair you're sitting on right god is real right it reveals the reality of god and then it reveals the nature of god okay um see that in let's quickly look at Uh, i mean it's in the notes right the god of the bible is real it is his nature to heal people from sickness and deliver us from all demonic work okay it is his nature that is who he, he is and we see that in exodus chapter 15 verse 26 right exodus 15 26 it says i am the lord who heals you and thus revealed himself through the covenant name jehovah rafa okay jehovah rafa the lord your healer right uh we can you can just do a, an entire study on the word covenant and what covenant meant to that culture okay it was a very serious thing and when god made a covenant he, when he's saying that's my covenant name i am your healer he was being very serious about it right um but just in the very next page you see uh, that verse elaborated exodus 15:26 and said if you diligently heed the voice of the lord your god and do what is right in his sight give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i will put none of the diseases on you which i have brought on the egyptians for i am the lord who heals you okay um this couple more scriptures very quickly um exodus chapter 23 right below uh you know in page 7 of your pdf Exodus 23 25 26 it says so you shall serve the lord your god and he will bless your bread and your water and i will take sickness away from the midst of you 
No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. And another scripture, uh, just one more and we move on, is Psalm 105 verse 37. He also brought them out with silver and gold and there were none feeble among the tribes. Okay, none feeble among the tribes. Uh, just one last scripture, and I like this. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 21. It's in the same page at the bottom, right? Page 7. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 21 it says, 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. Right? It's a witness, right? Uh, someone is acknowledging what God had done, right? This is Nehemiah writing. 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. Okay. Uh, the topic on the subject of the study of wilderness is one of my favorite uh, and I would encourage you to do the same because you know how dangerous and how uh, uncertain uh, wilderness can be but he sustained them in the wilderness they lacked nothing in, the, in a place where everything is a lack they lacked nothing right? their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell Okay, amazing, isn't it? Um, so that's the first point, right? Miracles, healing, and deliverance reveal the reality and the nature of God, right? Bible clearly establishes that it is God's nature to heal, deliver, and work miracles. It is his nature to sustain us, to keep us, right? He desires to be revealed in and through his people, right? So that the people will know that he is real, that he exists, and who he really is, what his nature is. Right? And so hence the reason we extend our faith and pray and minister healing, deliverance and miracles is to reveal who Jesus is. Right? Um, and one of the most uh, powerful points uh, uh, you know, that I came across, that I learned in, in, during the recent Christmas seasons is uh, we, we ask this question, you know, be it with your friends or your church members or whatnot, why did Jesus really come? How many of you have been asked that question? Why did Jesus have to come to earth, right? Um, and I've been asked the question, why did he really come? Uh, and we will have a lot of questions, right? If I were to ask the same question to you guys, okay, we have a 12, 16, um, 15 of us in this class right now at the moment, I think at least whom I can see, there must be more. Um, we will all have different answers, isn't it? He came to save the lost. He came to die for our sins. He, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The list can go on, isn't it? Um, this one point, it just hit me so hard and so beautifully in a way is that simply says that Jesus came to reveal the Father. Okay, why by dying for our sins on the cross, he revealed the Father's love for us. By healing a blind man's eye, he revealed who the Father is, right? By healing the sick, he revealed who the Father is. By uh, by being bruised for our iniquities, he revealed the love of the Father for us, right? In everything that Jesus did. He revealed the Father, right? Just like this first point, miracles, healing, and deliverance reveal the reality and the nature of God. And that's exactly what Jesus did, right? You guys with me? Okay. And the second point uh, is miracles reveal God's greatness. Miracle reveal, miracles reveal God's greatness. Um, the Lord Jesus revealed his glory through the miracles that he did. Um, simple verse mentioned there is John chapter 2 verse 11. We are in page 8 of the PDF right now. Um, the beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Okay, Manifested his glory. Um, it means I'm not sure if you remember uh, these two things that we learned in praise and worship class last year is uh, when we were studying about the presence of God. One is there is, he is omnipresent, right? He is everywhere, uh, right? He's in the heavens. He is with us right now. He's inside of us. He's beside you. He's beside in different nations at the moment, right? And then there is the manifest presence. Okay, there are times that he decides to show himself, that is the manifest presence, right? And that's what it really means is he manifested his glory. That means there was substance. It was tangible. People could see, right? And then hence the disciples believed him. So miracles reveal, again, unveiling revelation, God's greatness, right? 
Um, there's one scripture that's mentioned there uh, in Jeremiah chapter 32, 17. I'll read it for us. Is, uh, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Okay, I, this is very old song. Uh, I think Kent Henry uh, from, I think, 80s. Uh, uh, our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth with thy great power. Okay, very old, like I said, you know. Uh, <laughs> I was just born in that year, I think 87 or something. It came. Uh, so it's a very old song. Uh, but it's, it's singing the truth, isn't it? Uh, he is all powerful, all knowing, all sufficient, ever present, right? Uh, the psalm says, from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. Right, um, and so miracles reveal the greatness of God. And the third point is miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Miracles reveal God's compassion. Okay, uh, Psalm one forty-five, verse eight and nine. Psalm one forty-nine, verse eight and nine says, "The Lord is gracious and full." of compassion, right? full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all. You, you should probably underline that, okay? He is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Amen? Amen. We, we, what, what, what do we see here, okay? Uh, and we're going to read a couple of scriptures. Uh, we see that People need an encounter with the Lord, right? We have, this world is filled with hurting people, right? Um, uh, people who are going through X, Y, and Z, so, so many things. It doesn't say that the Lord is compassionate only to Christians, but the Lord is compassionate only to those who believe in the New Testament or the Old Testament, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't say that, right? There's no prerequisites, okay? That that we need to come before him with. If you, if you do so and so, if you are so and so, only then I will have compassion on you. No. But our Lord is full of compassion. He does not have any barriers. He does not judge us uh, with, with anything. And, and, that's, and the scriptures kind of correspond to that. In Matthew 14, 14, it says, When Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, you think Jesus would have worn his judgment glass and kind of scanned through everybody? Okay, who are the real Jews? Let me look at their hearts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, he just saw the great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. Amen. In Matthew chapter fifteen, verse thirty-two, the very next verse, it says, "Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said." I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry. Amen. Um, so miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Okay. Uh, something on the other, uh, on the side note, which I will reiterate in, in another point later on, but I feel like I need to, uh, it's a good side note is, when you, you think about the story of Jonah, okay, the first thing you it comes to you is Jonah and the whale. Okay, that, okay, that that's a Sunday school story, Jonah and the whale. And the second point maybe is about his disobedience, how he ran in the opposite direction, right? But what is the heart of that entire book? Is and that whole book, right? The last verse of the book of Jonah, if you read it, the last verse of the book of Jonah is is God asking Jonah, saying, should I not have compassion on this great city? Right? Another translation says, should I not have mercy on this great city? It was God's love and compassion for a city, right? Uh, that, 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 that's what made him call Jonah, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's full of compassion and we, you know, so grateful for that. Um, so that's the third point. Miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Are you guys with me so far? Yes? 
Yes, no, maybe. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's keep this going. Um, point four: Miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. Right? Miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. And there are four sub points, uh, four or five sub points to this point. First one: A. Miracles get people's attention. Okay. Miracles get people's attention, right? Um, before we just go ahead and read that verse, um, at the ministry of Benny Hinn, this is again going back to mid 2000s or early 2000s, right? That's when God TV was uh, available for, if not all, most of uh, the nation of India, everywhere, everybody, everybody knew about God TV, and then uh, would see about the programs and ministry of Benny Hinn and whatnot, right? So everybody knew about his healing ministry and how God was using him mightily, powerfully across the nations, right? And uh, and then so then the first time he came to Mumbai, I remember, as a huge population, just group of people went there. And then he came back again to Bangalore in 2005, January. I remember that because I volunteered for it, uh, to be a volunteer. Huge ground was filled with some, I don't know how many thousands of people. Uh, and why did they come, you know, from, and this was, this ground was in the outskirts of Bangalore, not in, not even in the heart of the Bangalore and people from every nation, every state in India would come, maybe even from other nations, wouldn't come. And, and so the first point here, miracle gets people's attention, right? So you get good and the bad. So <laughs> talking about Benny Hinn's ministry, okay, so he got a lot of bad attention. I remember how many news channels, the local Canada news channels and all were just, my gosh, belting him. You know, he's like, oh, he's this, he's that and whatnot. Now he's blacklisted from entering India and whatnot. But the point here is miracles get people's attention, right? It makes their head turn and see, okay, hey, what is happening, right? It's like a, an accident scene on the road or a fight is happening. It's like, oh, what, what's happening? What's happening? You know, it's, it's a very Indian thing to do, right? <laughs> Something happening on the road is like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> Even if it's the rush hour, you will stop your bike and see what happened and then only then move, okay? So something like that. So Luke chapter 5 verse 15 says, however, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Right? So it, it got their attention. Um, another scripture in Acts chapter 8, verse 6 is, And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Okay? So point A, miracles get people's attention. B, miracle, miracles act as signposts to point people to God and, and cause people to glorify God. Okay, it's very important, this point. Miracles act as signposts. Okay, what does a signpost do? For example, you're, you're on a long drive, you know, going from destination A to destination B, and you see a signpost saying, okay, this amazing hotel or cafe is... 20 kilometers away ahead of you okay so you don't stop at that signpost and rejoice is you know it's like wow i'm gone it's just a signpost you're not going to have a coffee there or anything to you know refresh yourself or take a break uh, nothing right it's a signpost it's leading to another important thing right the actual thing the goal right so that the goal here miracles act as a signpost it's like and all those signposts should lead to jesus He's the real deal, right? He's the end goal of it all, right? Miracles act as signposts to point people to God and cause people to glorify God, okay? Uh, the, your ministry of miracle signs and wonders should cause people to glorify yourself. <laughs> glorify God, isn't it, okay? Right? Um, so um, there's multiple scriptures that you can, uh, you know, read from that uh, 
in the notes, uh, but I just I, I don't want to read everything that's mentioned because it's there available for us. Okay, uh, I guess another important thing is, like I said, we are moving, not too fast, uh, hopefully, but you know, but that shouldn't. Please don't stop. Let it not stop you from reading the other important scriptures that is mentioned in the book. Okay, uh, it's very important. It keeps just it, it will continue to build your faith. Uh, you know, equip you, empower you. Um, you know, on on the same subject. Okay, and I hope that is all right. Okay, so um, the second point was miracles acts as signposts to point people to God because cause people to glorify God. And the third point is brings conviction of sin. Brings conviction of um, of sin, right? Um, in in Luke chapter five, we are, you can look at verse uh, page thirteen. Okay, uh, there's a scripture mentioned there. Luke chapter five, verse eight. Luke chapter five, verse eight, in page thirteen. Uh, just the context here is we know right. Peter and his team had fished all night and caught nothing, and uh, and Jesus comes and stands by the seashore uh, and says, "Cast your net on the other side." And uh, Peter says, Lord, we've tried doing this all night. We have caught nothing. But because you say so, because you say so, uh, we will do this. And uh, when Peter catches this huge catch, his response is this. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Right? Um so miracles, signs, and wonders, that's the context here, right? It leads us, it brings a conviction of sin in our hearts, all right? And then D, it brings people to a decision point. So at that point, Peter had to make a decision, right? And Jesus asks him a question, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Uh, in that conviction, following that, Peter had to make a decision. And we, all of us, arrive at that point. Right? When we are convicted, uh, you know, we have to make a decision. And usually in our context, in our modern day and age, there's an altar call being given, right? Uh, when we see what God is doing in a crusade or in a conference or in a church service and whatnot, um, we see all these wonderful things that's happening and it kind of convicts us and there's always an action call. Right? Uh, so like, are you willing to give your heart? What are you going to do about it? So there, it leads to a decision point, right? Uh, and and final point E is miracles are essential to see the transformation of the sin cities of the world. Miracles are essential to see transformation of the sin cities of the world. Um, I mean, this is in line with what I shared about Jonah and and Nineveh. It's, it's important that we, we see that God is filled with compassion. His heart is for the world to be saved. His heart is for your city to encounter, to see who Jesus really is. Okay, but then there are these, there's this verse that's mentioned uh, in the notes from bottom of page 13, uh, leading into page 14, right? Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 and 26. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 and 26. Um, again, just... To paraphrase that whole thing, Jesus says, if Sodom had seen the signs and wonders that I am doing today, they would have repented. Uh, and he's kind of rebuking the cities of Capernaum and Chorazin. He says, in verse 23, it says, and you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Um, it's, it's just, you know, that day and age of uh, metaphorically saying, Hey, you're too proud. Uh, you're too dependent on your own knowledge, uh, and 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 the wonder of your city is your economy seems to be great, and so you're very proud about it and whatnot. And hence, they did not believe in signs and wonders that they, even though they saw him do, they witnessed and they did not believe. Right? Uh, it got their attention. Remember, I said it, it can get your attention, good and bad. Right? And they didn't seem to care about it. But then Jesus makes this powerful statement saying, okay, you've witnessed what I've done. And if Sodom had witnessed what I'm doing, they would have repented, right? Uh, judgment on them will be a less harsher than judgment on you. And he's talking to Capernaum and Chorazin. 
Um, right, so that's point four. Uh, it's all about miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. Uh, right, that's point four. And leading into point five, the importance Jesus gave to miracles, right? Importance Jesus gave to miracles. Um, the miracles he was doing were more important than the testimony of John the Baptist. And if you just turn the page, um, in page 16, okay, we're in PDF page 16. Uh, here are some points that's mentioned there. And again, I don't want, I'm not going to read all the scriptures that's mentioned, but just go, go through the points that's mentioned is, the miracles he was doing were more important than the testimony of John the Baptist. When the Jews questioned him about being the Messiah, he pointed to the miracles he did as authentication and challenged them to believe because of the miracles he did. Okay, remember this point is about the importance Jesus gave to miracles. Okay, if is that, that should catch our attention. Okay, the importance Jesus gave to miracles. That means we had close attention to that. Point two is that every time he was questioned by the Pharisees or the Sadducees, are you really the Messiah? Well, you know, how can you say about this? And he, Jesus points towards the miracles he did as authentication and challenged them to believe. And in Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 and 6, uh, you know, when John the Baptist is in prison, he tells, uh, he sends his disciples to go and ask Jesus, you know, are you really the Messiah? What's happening? You know, that's that's the context of Matthew 11, verse 1 and 6. When John the Baptist in prison was doubting if Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the Lord Jesus pointed to his supernatural ministry as evidence that he was indeed the Messiah. And finally, point four is when his own disciples questioned him about the Father, the Lord Jesus pointed to the supernatural works he was doing as evidence that he and the Father were one. Okay, a very important point there, right? When his own disciples questioned Jesus about, his, about the Father and the Lord Jesus, he points towards the supernatural work that he was doing. And all of those things, uh, uh, you know, all the scriptures and every point that's mentioned there, uh, you know, is backed with the scriptures that's mentioned there. So I would encourage you guys to uh, go back and read those scriptures. Okay. Um, and just a couple more points uh, until we finish and we'll, you know, break. Um, point six is the kingdom comes with power, right? The kingdom comes with power. Okay. Um, in page 17, <clears throat> A couple of scriptures uh, mentioned there. Matthew 9 verse 35 says, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Okay, one more time. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, that means if I'm, if I'm moving in deliverance by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Okay, so the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power, right? And the, gospel, and the seventh point is the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs. Uh, let's quickly read... Um, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20. We are, uh, can any, someone go? Uh, let's, okay, let's go to page 21 in PDF. Page 21 in your PDF. Okay, can someone read uh, that verse, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20, please? Mark chapter 16 verses 15 to 20 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and this signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons and they will speak with the new tongues 
they will take up the serpents and if they drink anything deadly it will not by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover so <clears throat> then after the lord had spoken to them he was received up into the heaven and sat down at the right hand of the god and they went out and preached everywhere the lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs amen thank you sir right um so that's just to validate the seventh point that gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs right um that's what jesus asked us and to do and finally uh in point 8 is miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural miracles encourages us to believe for the more of the supernatural right uh, it 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 encourages us it it pushes us to be more hungry more thirsty to want more of what is of what god is doing right uh, again just what two couple of scriptures to validate this point is when jesus in matthew chapter 12 verse 15 in page 22 by the way sorry matthew 20 matthew chapter 12 verse 15 But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there. A great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. When Jesus withdrew, went to another place, great multitudes followed him. They were not just happy, you know, at that one point with whatever he did. They wanted more. It encouraged them to pursue him more. Right? Matthew fifteen thirty. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute. named and many others and they laid them down at Jesus's feet and he healed them right and like that uh, you know we can read scriptures after scriptures uh, and i think in john chapter 21 it says john writes uh, if we were to record everything what jesus had done uh, this world would not have enough books uh, to contain them all right um, so we're just reading a couple of scriptures to Uh, support all the points that's mentioned um right just to quickly run through the eight points uh you know on some of the biblical reasons why ministry of supernatural healing and deliverance is important right just to quickly run through is miracles healing and deliverance reveal the reality and the nature of god miracles reveal god's greatness miracles demonstrate god's compassion and miracles have a powerful effect on people especially on those who do not believe and the importance jesus gave to miracles and the kingdom of god on miracles and the power and the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs and wonders and the eighth one is miracles encourages people to believe for more of the supernatural okay uh with that we'll kind of stop now i sorry we went 5 minutes late i'll stop the recording uh we'll take a quick break and i'll see you all at 10:05